you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast, the hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Boss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com, thechrisvossshow.com. Hey, we certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks for being here once again. We have a massive returning guest that we've had on the show before. I think we had him on, I think it was last year. Uh, these years are blasting by me, and, and uh, it, it's pretty crazy. But we have some of the greatest authors on. In fact, they just reschedule stuff. It's crazy. I've got stuff booked out until December for books coming out. And I'm like, holy crap. Uh, some of our authors are just prolific in what they do. Uh, today we have another amazing author on the show. Yeah, Will Dean is with us today. Uh, we had him on for this first book that he had called The Last Thing to Burn. And I got to tell you, you got to read that book. It starts out just gripping you from, I think, the first page or two pages and uh, won't let you go. And he's out with his new book. And uh, this is going to be coming out July 5th. 2022 evidently uh the title of it is called first born and it's a novel that's going to be coming out a psychological thriller about the dark secrets that emerge when a woman's twin sister is murdered and it's got a signature intense gripping taunt uh terrifying moving and brilliant according to lisa jewel number one New York best, uh, New York Times bestselling author, uh, and uh, he is on the yes on the show today to talk about his book. Will Dean first grew up in the East Midlands of the United Kingdom and lived in nine villages before the age of eighteen. After studying law at London School of Economics and working in London, he settled in rural Sweden, where he built a wooden house in a boggy clearing at the center of a vast elk forest. And it's from this space that he compulsively reads and writes. His no his debut novel, uh, Dark Pines, was selected for Zoe Ball's Book Club on ITV, shortlisted for the National Book Awards, and The Guardians, not the Booker Prize, was named Telegraph Book of the Year. Welcome to the show, Will. How are you? Hello, Chris. It's good to be back, man. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. There you go. And it's great to have you back as well. I remember our discussion about your uh, living there in the elk forest, you uh, in know, a, in a boggy clearing. And, and you've uh, you, you've you, you're kind of living the life that maybe a lot of us do where you're semi unplugged or are you semi unplugged? Is that a good assessment? Yeah, we're pretty much off grid. So I have a well over there, which is where we get our water from. I, we chop wood for heating and cooking. We grow most of our own food, especially this time of year. We grow all of our own food. And wow. from where I'm sat, I can walk, I can hike pretty much a full day in any direction. I'm still in the same forest. Wow. That probably worked yeah. out good for COVID, right? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man, we didn't, we didn't really, uh, the thing is, the weird thing is Sweden didn't do anything with COVID. So it was oh, kind of like right. living in this big experiment anyway. And then in yeah. the woods, yeah, there was no difference. So it was kind of weird. Yeah. 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 They did that whole thing where they're just like, fuck it. We're just going for, uh, what was it? Uh, it's where they just they just go and let people get sick and all that stuff. But I think it backfired on the older people. Uh, but let's move on to uh, your book. Uh, so you've got this amazing book. What made you want to write this one? So with this one, I had the idea about three years ago. And I mm -hmm. saw almost like a picture of the globe with two sisters on the phone, two identical twins on the phone. Molly Raven in London, who is very anxious and controlling and like complicated she's got a little apartment full of fire alarms and fire blankets fire extinguishers uh, and then her sister in new york katie who is like flamboyant gregarious party goer flies around all the time to, to has a boyfriend has a full life studying at columbia in new york and i saw the sister in london get a phone call from her parents saying that her twin her identical twin had been found murdered in new york mm. and i just realized like how is she gonna how is molly raven gonna handle this getting on a plane for the first time getting her passport out of her fireproof safe for the first time flying over to new york being completely overwhelmed by the noise and the expense and the, the craziness of the city and then her getting there and realizing she never knew her identical twin as well as she thought she did oh oh 
And uh, and and is there a possibility of murder with her identical twin? There is, yeah. That's established pretty soon on, so that's not a spoiler. Yeah, for sure. Like the police are yeah. heavily involved. She's trying to uh, she's trying to kind of comfort her parents, deal with the grief, and at the same time mm-hmm. put a puzzle together of what her what her dead twin's life was really like. So she starts oh. kind of talking to her dead twin's boyfriend, her tutor, all these people. And she, she finds a lot of secrets out. And like halfway through the book, it takes a little bit of a change in tone and she suddenly grows in confidence and starts to seek revenge on the people that wronged her twin. Oh, murder, you say? Oh. <laughs> Doing that 2020 guy or whoever it is that does that. Well, tell us more. <laughs> uh, so uh, it sounds like she's was was she one of those people who's uh, what do they call that where they're the shut ins and they won't leave the house? Uh, agoraphobia or something like that. Uh, I think that's for spiders, but uh, she's not quite she like, like that? that. Yeah, that's that's yeah. used in a lot of thrillers. She's no, she's not. She's she's got a job like an admin job. She she has a fairly normal life, but. She's just very like calculating risks, you know, situational uh, awareness to the max. Uh, so she's, she walks down the street in New York and most people her age are just having fun looking for a restaurant. And she's there like looking at the scaffolding, looking at the water towers, looking at planes, uh, looking at like trucks getting too close to the curb. She's constantly analyzing the risks. Yeah. You, you're doing amazing with this. I was just looking here on Amazon. They're they're launching their hardcover at thirty six dollars and ninety nine cents, dude. That's pretty awesome for a no- novel, man. You've already got like uh, two hundred and seventy six. Uh, that's in dollars. They were two hundred seventy six ratings. It's not out till July. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've, I've got. I'm lucky. I've got a great editor, Emily Bessler at at Simon and Schuster is incredible. So I'm. I have a good team. That is awesome. I mean, two hundred seventy six reviews, and it's not even out yet. That's amazing. So uh, this thing's going to be pretty popular. I can tell when it hits. I mean, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be awesome. People loved your prior, prior books. So uh, she, she kind of develops and and does some of that does some of that uh, sleuthing ability or watching for danger ability uh, end up turning her into a bit of a detective. It does in a very mm. dark kind of sinister way. So I got a DM from someone the other day saying that it was like a cross between Gillian Flynn and the talented Mr. Ripley. And I like oh, that. That's huh? kind of where it sits. Huh. So it's quite, it's quite dark and things happen that you don't expect. Um, but it's all rooted in the psychology of twins. Cause I find twins so interesting. You know, when I was researching it, I heard from two twins, two identical twins who had never really touched each other since they were young kids. They, one of them said it was too weird, too freaky to, to hold hands with the other twin because it's like looking at yourself in the mirror. I found that really interesting. That's a really interesting thing. I mean, I always thought twins were like really buddy-buddy, uh, but I guess, you know. Well, with those, know. Two, with those two, they were really close. They talked yeah. to each other constantly throughout the day, like tell it, sharing really mundane snippets of information, but they can't touch. That was the thing mm-hmm. that was just like, no, I can't do that. I can't give my twin a hug because it's like hugging myself. Did you and interview I, a lot of? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I, I two other twins, and this made it into the book. Actually, one said that she bought a dress. She didn't tell her twin. The other twin bought the same dress, weirdly, at mm-hmm. the same time. And then she saw her twin wearing the dress, and she was like, "Oh my god, that's how I actually look in the dress. It's not how I look in the mirror. That is how I look and how I move in the dress. I'm never wearing that dress." Oh wow. It's kind of like when women show up at a party and someone else has got the red dress or the black dress on or whatever. And they're like, oh, my God, they have the same dress. And you're like, yeah, no, but imagine no, that. No, but it's like you wearing it. That's the weird. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That would be weird to look at yourself in the mirror. Did you interview a lot of twins for the for the book? I didn't interview any twins, but I, I just did a mm-hmm. huge amount of research, like l- reading blog posts from identical twins and also just mm-hmm. siblings. I'm really interested in that sibling rivalry thing. Like with this, uh. with these two. They were treated exactly the same until they were four years old. And then the fun one after that was kind of labeled the fun twin. And she was treated oh. as the fun, lighthearted, uh, f- entertaining one. And the other one was labeled like the serious, difficult twin. Mm. And I find it interesting how that resentment can manifest later on in life, you know? Yeah, and it plays out in the characters and stuff. Were there any uh, were there any movie stars you had in mind when you're writing the book, or anyone uh, in your real life that you were thinking of as some of the characters you're writing about in the book? 
Honestly, no. I think now that I'm talking to production companies, I need to start thinking about uh, <laughs> casting choices. But I never think like that. A lot of authors do. I know that. And that's probably a good idea. But I, I write in first person. So I see the world. So in this book, I see the world of New York through Molly Raven's eyes. So mm -hmm. I don't really know what she looks like even. I'm just looking at like how she deals with the, the world and mm -hmm. how she deals with her dead twin's tutor who was hitting mm -hmm. on her. How she deals with her dead twin's neighbor some incel who lives in the basement who was really oh. creepy around her so it's that's how i see that world wow and so uh uh i want to ask about the incel or is that going to lead me down a road <laughs> no you can ask you can ask <laughs> the, the incel doesn't the, the incel didn't do it then man i can't tell you that i can't tell you that but he's an oh. interesting character he's because he's an ex-incel that's the interesting thing so he's oh. been rejected by the incel community he was a big part of it a big youtuber <laughs> How do you get rejected and, by the incels? I mean, I thought they were the rejects of the rejects. <laughs> well, this is the interesting thing, right? I'm interested in subcultures, and I went down yeah. a rabbit hole with this subculture. I didn't really knew uh -huh. they existed until this book. But this guy was a, was a big incel, and then uh, he suddenly kind of started working out and started seeing girls, uh, and then he got rejected yeah. by the incel community. And That'll now he's, yeah, so now he's a YouTuber, but a lot of people don't like him. And, uh, mm. yeah, so. I can't maybe the insult yeah. people will kill him. Uh, yeah, the that's their next book. Um, the uh, I heard he blew the I blew the ending for uh, for the next book. Uh, no, that that's kind of funny. I I didn't think yeah that you probably get rejected by the insult community go the other way. It's so interesting the insult community. I just I just look at it and I just go what the hell have we done wrong in the last sixty years? Um, so what are some other uh, teasers about the book? Is there any, any stories or tidbits you can tease out for us that uh, uh, you think people will find interesting or maybe scenarios? Well, someone who, who uh, gave me a quote said that it's part murder mystery, part psychological thriller, which I think is spot on. So the first half mm -hmm. is very much is very much Molly being in New York out of her depth. And like to give you an example of how she is out of her depth or how paranoid she is when she flies, for the first time, she starts researching, can I take a parachute on the plane, like a commercial airplane? Um, <laughs> she takes knitting needles that are like, yeah, she takes knitting needles that are duct taped together in her coat because you're allowed to do that on a plane. I didn't know that. Um, she takes like all these improvised weapons that, that are allowed that she kind of makes on the plane uh, because she's so terrified of like uh, hijacks and stuff. And when she's uh -huh. in New York, she walks around. She knows she can't walk around with a baseball bat but she knows she can walk around with a baseball bat and a baseball and get away oh. with it. Huh. So there's a lot, there's a lot of that. I researched a lot of like Navy SEALs talking about situational awareness and how to, how to yeah. uh, defend yourself in a place like New York where you're not allowed to defend yourself in other ways. It's really interesting. But um, in terms of like teasers, this is the twistiest book I've ever written. Huh. So it is very yeah, Gillian Flynn, Talented Mr. Ripley. It turns on its head a few times. And I never expected that when I was planning it. That all came as a surprise to me. Mm. Is it like me, one of those uh, M. Night Shyamalan movies where you won't know until the end? Kind no of. But the thing with him is, like, The Sixth Sense was a was a masterpiece, right? It's a, such yeah. a good movie, especially when you watch it the second time. But then he went and tried to do that with every subsequent movie. And yeah, I think that's it, difficult it to pull off. It went downhill yeah. after that, yeah. It yeah, just got yeah. worse and worse and worse. Uh, I think the Mel Gibson movie was the last one I could stand. It was so obvious how the ending was going to be. It was just like yeah. you've overplayed this, but yeah, that was uh, that was uh, yeah. You you can only do that so many times. I don't know. Did Hitchcock do that? I don't remember. Uh, was well, there any? Was, hmm, so what he ahead. did was suspense. I love the way he did suspense. So he he used to yeah. say that the best way to write a suspenseful novel is to have two characters at a table and there's a bomb under the table and the reader knows there's a bomb, but the characters don't because you can string that scene out for, for hundreds of pages. I'm just talking and you know that there's a ticking time bomb. That's, that's the genius of suspense. And I think yeah. he's absolutely right. Yeah. What was so amazing about his work was he didn't really believe in actors. He believed in directors and writers, I guess, but uh, he was so critical and so ugly towards actors and he really felt like he he wrote well enough and directed well enough that it didn't matter the actors he could put in his movies he 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 could just kill based upon you know what he did and i remember seeing recently the 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 psycho building and how it was shot and the back end of it 
and and how it was built so that he could do that you know that that famous shot from top down from the stairs and stuff uh it was pretty it was pretty interesting to see because he really he really pioneered some of the uh cinematography back in the day 100 cool. percent. yeah i love i love the way uh that he shot his movies and also i watched the other day i rewatched the exorcist and the way they shot that movie as well with the steps oh, yeah. and they, just that building was incredible yeah yeah that was a hell of a movie scared the hell out of me but such, such a great movie uh but yeah there's some scenes in there that they'll make me jump every time like when the the girl comes running down the stairs upside down on her hands and like, like ah i know man it's <laughs> And I feel so sorry for the actress because, like, what a thing to. Sorry, we're not talking about my book anymore, but what a thing to act when you're like 12 years old. You know, yeah. how do you get? How do you move on from that in life? Yeah, yeah. I think I think my six six wives are the same way. Uh, the uh, the <laughs> every now and then you run around like that. Uh, so, uh, are most of your books psychological thrillers? Remind me if 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 they are or aren't. They're suspense. Yeah, they just I think they're just dark and settling books. Yeah, they're suspenseful. Yeah. Um, I don't think every novel needs a big twist, but I think when yeah. you come up with one, yeah, it can be really satisfying. Like a like a Gone Girl twist or a Shutter Island twist. It's a beautiful thing when it happens. So who hurt, so who hurt you? No, I'm just kidding. Um, what, what makes it so that you you know aspire to these types of novels that uh, that are that are built this way? This thrillers. It's just what I read, you know, since I was a kid, I think uh, Roald Dahl was a big inspiration as a little kid, and they were really freaking dark, those books. And the things that I was reading, you know, I come from a family, we call a family with no books in the house whatsoever, but no, not a single book. Um, but my mum was good enough to take me to a local mobile library truck a lot. And I used to get Stephen King novels that he didn't know that they were completely unsuitable for like an 11 year old, but I would. I would read these things and I would reread them. You know, his books back then were really big, but I would get through them. And uh, so he's a big inspiration as well. Just going to a dark place. You know, I, I felt like I was from this small town and I felt like an alien growing up. I wasn't one of the cool kids at all. And reading for me, reading fiction was my escape until I got out of that small town. And still now, I'm just, I love reading dark fiction, unsettling fiction. It doesn't have to be a thrill of anything where it's like, okay. This author taking me to a really interesting place where I'm going to feel uncomfortable. I like that. Yeah. You like the freedom of being able to, to go to different places and write that way? I guess. I don't really think about it like that. I just, mm. I, what I, the reason I write, and I'm just lucky that I get to be a full time writer here in the woods, but the reason I do it is for that first draft buzz when I'm telling myself a story for the first time that's never existed before. Yeah. And I write my first drafts in three or four weeks, which is unhealthily quick. And uh, I'm just in a kind of fever dream state. I'm just enjoying it. I'm really, I'm like a kid wow. again, you know? Wow. And then when I'm done, then all the rewriting starts, which is just a nine to five job. But that first draft is a lot of fun. Yeah. You just, just pound it out. That's awesome, man. You just have that uh, gift for it. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a fun book and it's already popular. 276 ratings. It's not even out yet. Uh, what is it out next week? I think. Yeah, next week, a week from now. Uh, so this should be pretty awesome. Uh, anything more you want to touch on, Will, or tease out about the book before we go? I don't think so. I'm happy if people read it and enjoy it. I'm getting a lot of letters and emails on this book already there from bloggers go. and stuff, which is great because I don't normally get that. People are emailing me and DMing me at a particular point in the book. It's always the same point. Oh. That's quite fun. Ah, so there, so if anybody wants to get in touch when they get to that point, I'm happy to happy to talk. Find out what that is. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Will. We really appreciate it. Uh, give us your .com so people can find you on the interwebs. Uh, on Instagram, Twitter, Will Dean Author, TikTok, and on YouTube, I'm Will Dean Forest Author. And on there, I give. It's not about my books. Will Dean Forest Author is about me giving other writers tips on how to get an agent how to get published how to make money from uh, being an author now i recall that yes you have a, like a youtube channel on it as well right yeah so i'm i share my like query letter that got me an agent because it's hard mm -hmm. to get a literary agent it's tough yeah. and so i wanted to just like give that up so it would help other people and 
try and give people a little bit of confidence that they can do it because a lot of writers are from like literary families in London and New York and I was not that person and I never thought I'd be able to be a writer so anybody else like me I want to give them a little helping hand or a bit of confidence that they can do it as well there you go there you go I remember watching your videos well, thank you very much Will for coming on the show we really appreciate it thank you Chris great to be back Thank you. And continued success, my friend. Uh, thanks to my audience for being here. Be sure to go check out all of our properties on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all those places the cool kids are playing. Chris Voss, uh, uh, dot, what is it? YouTube.com, Forge Chess Chris Voss. And then uh, the big LinkedIn for all that sort of stuff. And uh, Goodreads.com, Forge Chess Chris Voss as well. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time.